Marty Barron is one of the most consequential newspaper editors in the country. He's led news coverage of the Florida recount in 2000, the 9-11 terrorist attacks, the historic election of President Barack Obama, two impeachment proceedings against Donald Trump, and a global pandemic. But it was the Boston Globe Spotlight team's pioneering work in 2001 and 2002, chronicling decades of clergy sex abuse and cover-up in the Boston Archdiocese, that would be turned into an Academy Award-winning film in 2015, where Barron was memorably portrayed by Lee Schreiber. Barron has been the executive editor of the Washington Post for the last eight years, and as he heads into retirement, he spoke with NCR about the legacy of the Spotlight investigation and the future of journalism. The church, I mean, clearly it had a profound impact. The church was uh, had to confront these charges. They were incredibly well documented. Uh, we had internal church documents. They demonstrated that the hierarchy of the church had betrayed the faithful and uh, the most faithful, uh, the most devout uh, within the church, uh, particularly single moms who had entrusted their kids to um, a male figure uh, the, who could substitute perhaps as a father figure for, uh, for the, their, the father they didn't have. And they trusted that these kids would be well taken care of because it was a priest uh, and they were totally betrayed. Um, and, uh, and then the church betrayed the, um, uh, the faithful more generally uh, by covering this up for decades. And, um, and reassigning these priests from one church to the, one parish to the next, uh, where they then abused again and again, and then they were just reassigned. Uh, so it was a betrayal on a massive scale. And it wasn't just uh, in the Archdiocese of Boston, but it was in uh, it was throughout the country, uh, as, it, as that turned out to be the case, and it was throughout the world. I think the church was more responsive more recent in the more recent years, um, recognizes that it can't just sit on this, recognizes that it can't dismiss this as a, as a, a, a rare instance, recognize that um, the press was not going to go away, um, uh, recognize that law enforcement authorities could not be um, pressured into doing nothing as they had in the past, uh, essentially recognize that the entire environment for them had, had changed. Uh, and so therefore their response needed to be different. Um, it was no longer just a matter of talking to your pals in the, in the press or your pals in government, um, uh, telling them that we'll take care of this and then they go away. Uh, nobody was going away. Um, people were going to stay on it. And, um, and fortunately they have. Um, and I think that's why it's important. It's important for, uh, it's important for the press to stay on these stories. It's important for government officials, uh, prosecutors, and what have you, to and legislators to stay on these kinds of stories, to stay on these these cases. Um, and I think we we see, for example, even in in develop in, in developing countries and in, in parts of the world where there is not as vigorous a press, where there's not as um, uh, we, we don't hear of many cases, uh, and that's probably because the church is not under pressure. So if you look in Asia and Africa, you just don't, you don't hear very much. And it's not because there's some, something special about Asia and Africa where the church is quite af active. Uh, in fact, big growth areas for the church in contrast to the more developed world. Um, and you don't hear of cases. And that's because the church is probably not feeling the same level of pressure. It's a period of special difficulty for us uh, because um, a democracy and the press within the democracy uh, requires a society that has that agrees to a common set of facts. Uh, the press has always been considered to be an arbiter of fact. We're not the only one. We're not a perfect one, but we're among them and a uh, the responsible press. And uh, to be continually portrayed as a purveyor of fake news is... Uh, obviously extremely unhelpful. And uh, we, re we depend very much on our credibility. Uh, that is what we have to offer. Um, so when your credibility is being attacked uh, 
relentlessly and unjustifiably, um, then um, clearly it makes life more difficult. I mean, the question is, how do we get to, how do we return to a, a time when people can agree on a common set of facts, um, where people are not living in parallel information universes, uh, one rooted in reality and one rooted in uh, complete fantasy?